Hello there, and welcome to Community Connections with Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. Today, I am but one of your hosts, Sean Boyle, and with me is... Ashley Mott. And welcome to... This day is a special day. It is. Every day is a special day, but today is especially <laughs> special because for our radio listeners, we are actually in the WLX St. Lucie Education Channel studio, and for you TV viewers, <laughs> clearly we're in the studio, <laughs> but this, this program is also on the radio every Sunday at 10 a.m. on 104.5 The Flame, and we come together once a month for TV, every week for radio, to talk about programs and resources that are available to children and families in St. Lucie County to continue to make St. Lucie County a great community. I feel like this is our uh, most formal show of the month, don't you? Because we're in the studio. I, because and because we're wearing sport coats. <laughs> right now, because we have to get dressed up and people are watching us. We have a new fancy graphic. I know. It's, it's, very, it's a very exciting day. It doesn't really play well on radio, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> so we at the Children's Services Council, why we come together once a month or weekly is because at Children's Services Council, we do five things really well in this community. Those five things are, one, making sure every baby's a healthy baby, uh, stopping child abuse before it happens, keeping kids off the streets, keeping them in school, and keeping them off drugs, alcohol, and other risky behaviors by providing resources and programs to all families in St. Lucie County. We're gonna talk about one of those things a lot today, that, that keeping kids in school. We're gonna talk about that one a lot today. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna keep our guests a little on edge and you guys a little bit in suspense until we get to them. Uh -oh. That's right. Um, but Sean talked about those five priorities and um, we've got 49 programs this year that are working really hard to, to do those five things really well. And we've got a, a lot of different ways that you can learn more about those programs outside of this awesome show. Um, one of those ways is on our website, which is www.cscslc.org. I'll go slow so everybody yeah. can get that done. Um, it's on the bottom of the screen. There you go. Um, but we've got a lot of information on our website. You can learn about each and every one of those funded programs. You can find a copy of our printed family guide where we've got a description of each of the programs along with contact information for you to get a phone number to get direct access to them. We've got success <coughs> stories from those programs. We've got um, all kinds of statistics about what those programs are doing and the impact they're having in our community. <laughs> Just got a ton of information um, on our website. I would encourage everybody to take a look at everything that we've got there to offer. And we also have, if, you, if you're like, look, Sean, going to a website that's old school i don't do that anymore but i will go to an app we have an app for that we do have an app for that <laughs> so you can download the app either on the itunes store or the google play, google play store look up children's services council or csc slc the app <coughs> has all of our programs listed you can easily map the location one button touch call um, but be the hero in your community <laughs> at the congregation in your neighborhood at the workplace by knowing what resources are out there for the families that you love and interact within the community. And I will say one of the things that we always like to mention about, especially that mapping feature, is specific to our after school school programs. And we've talked about that a lot. Obviously, you know, we've been in school for gosh, like almost two months now. Has it been that long? A month and a half. If you ask the kids, they may it's say too longer. Long. Yes. We've been in too long already. Um, but the mapping feature is really cool, especially for our after school programs, because you can really identify if you're looking for a place close to home, close to school, close to mom's work. Um, you can identify where those after school programs are located and really pinpoint the best place for your for your child to be. So. And we talk a lot about after school programs for you regular listeners because it's so important. We just read a research paper that was done nationally that showed that children that attend after school programs are uh, uh, go to school more often than their peers and do better academically than their peers. So we encourage everybody, if you don't know what your child is doing when they get out of school, make sure they're in an after school program as a parent. Make sure you tour the facility before you enroll your child. Maybe even talk to the staff there. But again, get them enrolled in a program. And we've got lots of choices for you. <laughs> yeah. And you know, before we, we get to our guests who are waiting patiently, and I kind of teased a little bit about <laughs> who our guest is today, our guest plural, I should say. Um, there's a couple other ways that you can connect with us. We are on Facebook. We're just like your uncle and your aunt that's also on Facebook that's posting things that happened to them 20 years ago. We too are on Facebook posting things that are happening in the community, resources or inspirational messages. On top of that, if you have a suggestion for any of these programs that we do, uh, whether it be you know a topic you want us to, to discuss 
or because we have too much caffeine in us and we're going through these numbers too fast. <laughs> if you have any suggestion for a show or information, you can text us directly during the show at 772-237-1130. Again, text us, don't call, text <laughs> at 772-237-1130. Good job. Now, we have guests that are waiting patiently. We do, they're being very quiet, which is unlike them. We try to get them a laugh. <laughs> They I almost got one. I almost got one to start laughing. They do that. They laugh. So we kind of joke at the beginning of the show that one of our priority areas is keeping kids in school, and that sort of has a lot of different meanings. Um, but specific to the two ladies that are with us today, um, it has a, a special meaning this month um, because September is Attendance Awareness Month, um, and while the two of you have sort of different roles and responsibilities in your jobs, you come together to do very similar things. Um, and, and one of those big things is making sure that kids are in school. Um, so we are really lucky today to have Linda Soto and Stacy Kaysen with us today. So I'll kind of let you both really introduce yourself, where you're from, and kind of what you each do individually, because it's different. Mm -hmm. um, but then talk a little bit about um, Attendance Awareness Month and what that means and how, as a community, we're really addressing it locally. Okay, well, I'll get started, <laughs> as I always do. Um, I'm Linda Soto, and I'm with uh, the Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County. I am a uh, truancy, I, I'm the director of preventive services and oversee the truancy project. Um, and what we do is we serve eight of the local elementary schools in St. Lucie County thanks to Children's Service Council for their funding. Um, and we connect with those schools and the staff, and we reach out to students or parents of students who have five or more unexcused absences. And um, just kind of inform them of the state law on attendance and review school policy. Um, so we have a great rapport and relationship with the school district mm -hmm. Um, as well as well as Children's Home Society, who also has a similar program or the same program that we do. Um, I have been with the program since it started in 2006 um, and have just continually strived toward improving upon um, what we do and, and reiterating and reassuring, um, or not reassuring, but reiterating the importance of school attendance. So with that being said, in my introduction, I'll turn it over to Stacy Kaysen. Thank you. So my name is Stacy Kaysen. I work for St. Lucie Public Schools in the Department of Student Services. And my job function there is uh, program specialist is the job title, but I really serve as our lead school social worker. And our social workers are the people in our school district who are really working with our schools to try to manage um, the truancy issues to make sure that our students are coming to school every day. And so that group of people are um, working with schools, with parents, with our community partners. We are very grateful to have um, the partnership we have with Boys and Girls Club and Children's Home Society to help monitor the attendance in some of our elementary schools. Between the two of them, they serve 15 of our elementary schools. And we really have there are eight school social workers for about 40,000 students in our district. So we really need that partnership that we have to help us monitor those attendance pieces. And the elementary grades are our primary focus with the truancy project simply because we can have the biggest impact on what's going to hopefully change a lifetime of, um, of school, that school lifetime of, of their participation in school and their attendance. I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like some people listening might be like elementary school, like why in the world would those kids <coughs> not be the ones going to school? Like, you know, when you think back to when you were in <laughs> school, it's the high school kids that mm -hmm. choose not to go, right? Because yep, that's true. they are at an age where they can, you know, make the choice mm -hmm. not to go to school. Um, but really, these programs are designed, these community programs are designed to focus on the elementary age to really set the standard. Yes. Um, and that's why you guys have, have chosen to focus on the elementary mm -hmm. ages. Absolutely, and it, it's so important, and, and you don't really realize, but between kindergarten and third grade, or, or second grade, really, um, if the attendance is not act, you know, on a, on a regular basis. The children are missing out on so much learning opportunity, and studies have shown that students that 
have had a lot of absences throughout that time frame have um, suffered in their reading come third grade. Um, and Stacy might be able to elaborate a little bit more on that, maybe not, but <laughs> <laughs> but but um, that is truly a, a, a prime, you know, we focus on elementary because we feel that the parents kind of instill um, or have that opportunity to instill the value and importance of school attendance and once they get to the older um, grade levels, hopefully that's already instilled in them and, and they attend on a regular basis. Whereas if it's the parents don't instill that as a young age, um, attendance seems to be worse and we have more high school dropouts and I actually have some um, national statistics that I was kind of intrigued by or surprised by, I should say, that 82% of um, prisoners in America ha are high school dropouts. Wow. Yeah, 82%. And, you know, it, it just, um, again, reiterates the importance of school attendance because by missing a day of school, you're missing classroom opportunity, you know, um, interacting with your peers, you know, as well as education. So it does have a, a severe impact on, you know, our youth in the future. So, you know, it sounds so obvious, right? I mean, like, <laughs> obviously, if you have a child, they should go to school, because mm -hmm. obviously you can learn better at school than not being there. Right. So it sounds pretty point. obvious. <laughs> right. But obviously, you, you mentioned chronic absence. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of define to us maybe what, what chronic absence means and how prevalent it is? So chronic absenteeism is different from truancy in that it really does include any reason you're absence, absent from school. Whether it's an excused absence because you really were sick and you needed to stay home so you didn't share those germs with everybody because <laughs> we don't want the whole school to get the flu. Um, or because there was a suspension because of a disciplinary issue or just an unexcused absence reason we don't know why. Chronic absence is defined as those kids who miss 10% or more of the school year for any reason. And that only takes one to two days a month to add up and before you know it that you now have somebody who's chronically absent and like you just said you cannot learn when you're not there you can do makeup work of course but you still miss the instruction that happened and the participation that happens in that classroom setting with peers and with that one-on-one -on -one instruction from the teacher and it differs from truancy at the in the fact that we're just looking at unexcused absences which is really more of a legal definition I guess if you will um, but are, are we really are trying to focus on that that those kids who are chronically absent and that number varies from at our schools currently anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of a school um, population might be um, in that boat of, of missing that of that 10 percent of the school year just depending on the school that it is and really in the grand scheme of things it's not a lot of days it's not if you have a child who is get sick easily mm -hmm. it's easy to miss two days a month especially for very young children mm -hmm. those kindergartners first graders who did not have any kind of preschool exposure and haven't really been around other children in that l large group setting who are so much more at risk for getting sick more easily mm -hmm. so it really is something that we need parents to partner with us to, to keep an eye on and to pay attention to it so that we can keep them in school on a regular basis we should um, put a shout out there for our healthy kids and Insurance. That's yeah. the reason that your kids have insurance. Exactly, yes. and it's funny that you mentioned that because we um, utilize a lot of the community resources um, and when we run into situations like that. Families who, you know, maybe the child's not attending school or is missing a lot of school due to illness. Mm -hmm. um, and we may learn that the family doesn't have insurance for the children. So we will refer them to a lot of our community resources. Well, and I, I think you bring up a good point because I think there have been situations, and I know from conversations that you and I have mm -hmm. had, um, there are a lot of extenuating circumstances mm -hmm. that families come under. And you guys have, have frequently gone above and beyond, you know, the scope of maybe what this program was intended for to assist families with whatever they might need, um, you know, to, to make sure that these kids get back to school. Um, what are some of the challenges that families are facing, you know, that, that are happening in the community that you guys are seeing? 
Transportation issues are a big problem for our students. We have a lot of families who the school district um, does not provide busing transportation if you live within two miles of a school. So families that live in that neighborhood area, um, it was really rainy this morning. Mm -hmm. And on a day like today, it's very difficult. Sometimes we will see an increase in absences for a day like today. Um, homelessness is a huge problem. Every school year we have an average of six to seven hundred students who are classified as homeless under the McKinney-Vento legislation. So just those, I mean, two very, you know, tragic things, if you will, I guess, when you, you just can't get there because there's no car, the car's broken down, whatever, and then homelessness because you're doubled up and living with grandma because something happened to your home, or, you know, the, the more extreme cases where they really are living in a hotel because things are so difficult at home right now. Those challenges, when you're focusing on where you're going to sleep that night and mm -hmm. what you're going to eat, it's really hard to focus on making sure kids get to school. Mm -hmm. And so we really do try to partner with our community agencies to find those resources those families need so that those kids can be more, um, more regularly attending because that's a safe place, it's a stable place, it's somewhere where there's continuity and if mm -hmm. we can keep that continuity for those children, they have a better chance of success. Absolutely, and also economics plays a big part. Yes. You know, we have a lot of students that are out of dress code or don't have the <laughs> appropriately clo appropriate clothes to wear. So, um, you know, again, there's resources like Hope's Closet and, you know, various others that, that we utilize or, or refer the families to um, to help out in those situations. So can you maybe speak to, and there's two things, you mentioned something that every parent can do. I want to get back to that, but I want to talk about, so how does, how does it work? So, you know, you get a list of children that are have three or more unexcused absences, five, five or more mm -hmm. unexcused absences, what happens next? Okay, so um, just to walk you through our process is uh, we receive, or I print out, um, in our partnership with the school district, we have access to the database, the school database. Um, and that allows us to print out a report every two weeks um, of students that have five or more unexcused absences in the eight schools that we serve. Once uh, I have two workers, Ron Brazil and Tanisha Jones, who are um, under under me and in, in, in the truancy project, and we together contact those families. Um, again, notifying the parents of the child's absence, making sure that they're aware that their child was out for those number of days, um, and that letting them know that documentation needs to be provided, whether it's from them or if they took the child to a doctor or whatever the situation may have been, that if they turn in a note, that absence becomes an, unex an excused absence. Um, so we focus on the unexcused versus the overall attendance because was the child really needing to miss school, you know, and, and just kind of reiterating the law you know, that it is the state law that a child attends school from the age of six until 18. Um, and that um, there is school policy on that, you know, um, and it, the impact that it has on their children by missing, or even we are one of the main issues or a, a high uh, concern that we have are the tardies. Mm -hmm. Parents will drop their children off late. You know, and a lot of times when we contact the parents, it's like, oh, well, it's just five minutes, or we were just, you know, but five minutes is a disruption to the other students that yes. arrived on time. You know, and after five unexcused tardies, that becomes an unexcused absence. Um, so as the process goes, if the attendance doesn't improve after our initial contact, we'll reach out to the family again to just kind of reiterate and find out what's going on and if resources are needed to, to help their situation. Um, and then we'll request a meeting at the school. Um, the parents are invited, teachers, all personnel or staff at the school that is involved with the child is asked to attend to kind of come together as a network team to see how we can assure that this particular child is getting to school on a regular basis. Um, and if all those efforts are put forth and the parents still fail to <coughs> comply or, you know, assure that the child's getting to school, we then um, petition um, the court to have the matter go before the magistrate. And at that time, once they're in court, they're in court until the attendance shows significant improvement. 
So hopefully not a lot of cases do that, <laughs> but I think that reiterates the point that it's the parent's responsibility to get the kindergarten through eighth grade child to school, and your point being taking them to court reiterates that responsibility yes. that, you know, obviously children aren't driving themselves to school. <laughs> Correct. It's the Correct. parent's responsibility Correct. to get them to school. Correct. And that's why we focus on the elementary level. You know, it is the parents. It's, it's, it's our job. I am a parent. It's our job to instill that positive. It, it's for their future, you know. Um, if we didn't show up to work or if we showed up too late for work every day or failed to, you know, miss a couple of days, Will we still have our jobs? <laughs> or, or to Stacy's point, even if you didn't show up, but you just showed up 90% of the time, someone's right. going to say, hey, yeah. you know, everybody else is showing up 100%. Yeah, exactly. You know, unless you have the flu. Exactly. Come, yeah, that's our problem. Yeah. Don't yeah. 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 everybody, really. And, and, you know, I appreciate that, you know, because a lot of times, and I remember, you know, when my children were younger, they'd be sick, you know, mm -hmm. sick a couple of days. You know, sometimes it's hard to get to the doctor's office, or you just forget to turn in that unexcused. Mm -hmm. And I can remember, you and I have talked about this, I can remember sitting in the after school or the end of the school mm -hmm. ceremonies and so-and-so gets the award for never missing a day <laughs> from Perfect kindergarten attendance. to sixth grade. And all I keep thinking in my head is, they sent their child sick to school. <laughs> yes. I promise you that child got sick. But, but making sure that uh, for parents, and making sure that if they're sick, that you do turn in that the doctor's note, note mm -hmm. to make it from an unexcused to an excused. What else can parents do during uh, school attendance month to make sure that their child gets to school? <laughs> So I guess really just making sure that, you know, the, the value of education starts at home for all of our families. So whether it is, um, it's important to do this. And, and this is, you know, we have to, you want to grow up and do something. All children have aspirations for things. Well, how are you going to get there if you don't go to school? So really starting at the family level, those kind of conversations that we have with our children are really or, or what's going to set the tone for them and making that a priority for us as parents to make sure that that's, um, that that's important for them. I have a, a little guy who's in third grade and he wakes up with a sick stomach, you know, at least <laughs> once a week, once a week probably. But we get up and we go to school out anyways. And um, sometimes you just got to work through it, even though, you know, you're not feeling well. And by the time lunch rolls around, you're great and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. So you just have to work through that a lot of times. And a lot of parents, it seems like, um, you know, they care about their kids and they, they want to take care of them and they just, oh, I'm sorry you feel bad today. Let's stay home and take a day. But when that happens every couple of weeks, the progression of what we get to with not being there just spirals out of control sometimes. The parents just don't realize what point it gets to. And I too read um, a statistic. I don't know if it's on this paper or not. I was reading some information um, in relation to not just attendance, but some some statistics we've been looking at in relationship to our campaign for grade level reading as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they were talking about, and Linda kind of referenced this as well, when a student is consistently missing classroom instruction, the teacher is having to hold back the rest of the class then to teach to that student because, you know, how, how much of the whole, the rest of the class then mm -hmm. is missing out on classroom instruction because she's having to hold back to kind of catch up to that student. So, you know, it's, it's important for the student who's missing class, but it's important for the rest of the students mm -hmm. as well um, to make sure that all of our students are successful in the classroom. Absolutely, and that, that is something that I, when I contact the families, um, I reiterate that to the parents, especially when they just say, oh, well, we were only 5, 10, 15 minutes late. And, you know, I explain to them that, well, now your child's walking into a classroom that's already kind of established. Mm -hmm. And the teacher's having to, you know, when a kid walks into class, I know when I walk in, hey! You know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, to regroup late. them, refocus them, and something that I learned through, through the Truancy Project or the, my work in the, with the Truancy Project is that the core subjects are in the morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if they miss a portion of that morning, mm -hmm. they're missing crucial the, the tough stuff. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The stuff that really matters, you know. And it adds up but, so quickly. You can yeah. be 10 mm -hmm. minutes 10 minutes late every day and right. you've um, you've you've mastered you've managed to miss now 50 minutes of your school right. week, which as you go on throughout the year, you're you're talking about it easily adds up to a whole week of school missed right. just because of tardiness. So it, it it is disruptive for everybody, including that student. Absolutely. And I know we talk about um, arriving to school late. But it's also oh, a lot of early. children are picked up 
early. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is too. considered a tardy as well because they're leaving school early. So they're missing some sort of education time. Um, you know, and it's a lot of times it's parents just don't want to wait in the car loop or, <laughs> you know, different things like that. And it's, you know, all I say is if you love your children, you're, you're <laughs> really, you know, this is of importance. This is something that you really want to emphasize. And, um, you know, it's, it's for the, your children's future. So. That's funny you say that because when you said that about getting out of school early, one of my fondest memories of my father is when he got me out of school early. <laughs> <laughs> to go see Star Wars the movie, but but uh, to your point is you know all you know education is the key you know mm -hmm. education is the key to get out of poverty education is the key to attain your dreams mm -hmm. um, and that time at the school every single minute counts okay. um, for that child's success particularly at the younger ages you know as you mentioned we're kicking off this grade level reading campaign St. Lucie Reads check out <laughs> stlucyreads.org little plug there um, but one of the three principles for making sure that children can read at grade level is school attendance. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, even if they miss 10 minutes a day, that's 50 minutes mm -hmm. of instruction in that week. I mean, they could be covering the basics, reading. And even when we get to the older grades, in ninth grade, attendance, missing a lot of att days of attendance in ninth grade is a bigger indicator of probability of not graduating than what their test scores were in eighth grade. Wow. So mm -hmm. it's just huge all across the board, whether it's the little guys at the five and six years old just starting or even the high schoolers. Wow. So we want to start early. First of all, all, all school attendance matters. So regardless of the age, make sure your child is attending yep. school. We have resources to provide that baseline so that they can get in the habit at a young age of going to school and that hopefully carries on through middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. Um, we have like a minute and a half left. Do you have a quick oh. success story? Just, we always want to end on a well, positive note. Well, I, I just want to actually, you made a quick comment about um, after school programs. And the Boys and Girls Club, um, we, we have a program, it's called um, Power Hour. So all club members have to participate and attend in that Power Hour. It's like homework, you know, the, an hour where they can do their homework and, and all, all of that. So definitely, whether it's the Boys and Girls Club or any other after school program, it is crucial to get those kids in. Um, and yes, I do have success stories, but it'll probably take longer than a minute. Um, it, it's but, but you can find them all on our website yes. Yes. at cscslc.org. Because we share them there. Yeah. So while uh, we're we're obviously um, both being televised and on the radio station, so everybody watching on TV can see everybody's phone numbers. But on the radio, they can't see what's on TV clearly. So do you have a number that they can get a hold of both of you? So the school district, the student services phone number within the school district is 772-429-4510-4510. That comes to student services. And you can find your school social worker for the school that your child attends by calling that office or just ask the front office staff at your school. Awesome. And for the Boys and Girls Club, you can call. And I know this is probably going to be a different number than what's on the screen, <laughs> but you can use both. And um, the reason that I don't know the one on the screen is because it's a new number. It's 772-398-9912. You, 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 you look real sure about that. I know. I know. You said that with relative confidence. I'm unsure of that. Well, thank you so very much for coming on. Thank and you. remember, folks, it's... Uh, what is it? School Attendance Awareness Month. Yes. Did attendance I say it right? Awareness Month. Attendance month. Awareness Month. I was that Start close. the school year off on the right foot. That's right. <laughs> we want to thank you for tuning in. It's a weekly radio program, so check us out on 104.5 The Flame. And remember, it's our children, our community, our future. We're all in this together. We'll see you next time.